Hey guys! Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather. Convince this guy to come back for a show. Yeah, yeah, so, took some convincing. It's gonna be quite the show today. I don't know if you guys can see all of this. Yeah, we got some serious prep work going here. We got, I think, almost, what, 20 different finishes, essentially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, At least 20. Yeah. So, yeah, so today, if you paid attention to the um, title of this this program at all, we're doing finishes. We're going to go over, like Clayton said, we've got about 20 different options here, um, which is pretty much all of the finishes that we sell. And we did exclude anything that they called resist. So we've gone over many different resist options um, in the past with all of your tooling videos. So today will strictly kind of be about leather finishes. Right. Now, um, many of these can be used as a resist. That's yes. just not exactly what we're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So. We better dive right in because we got a lot going on. So you can see we, we did some coaster samples beforehand uh, where we finished half of a natural coaster uh, with each finish, both Herman Oak and Import. Right, so the import's gonna be your lighter color veg tan, and that Herman Oak is kind of that darker tan. Yes, so we've got, we've got this is gonna be your import leathers, all the kind of white, brighter one, and then this is your Herman Oak, this dark peachy toned color. Exactly, so what, where do you wanna start? Well, so why use a finish, Clayton? Why use a finish? Yeah. Well, a lot of times it's to resist any kind of moisture or staining or, you know, kind of waterproof your leather. Sure, it's also uh, to keep that dye in. Exactly, keep yeah. your dye in. If you, a lot of times whenever you dye a piece of leather, especially if you dye it real heavy or you're dip dyeing, um, afterwards that dye will still rub off on different surfaces. Like you can see this piece of, we've got some coasters over here that aren't finished that we dyed. And you'll, you'll see the difference. We're gonna finish a few of them for you guys. And there's a big difference in the tone, the warmth of the colors. Yeah, and that pigment is still sitting on top. So anything that didn't, get drug into the leather by the alcohol carrier, um, the pigment is still just sitting on the top. So yeah, like Clayton said, that's gonna rub off. So you really need to make sure that you um, kind of get that pigment off and then put a sealer on it so that your clients aren't having issues with their leather products. Um, mainly today, we're gonna be dealing with veg. Uh, Clayton did bring a couple stools in that we might just kind of go over real fast about if you wanna liven up your upholstery leather. But mostly today will be about finishing vegetable tan leather. We did airbrush about five different colors of coasters over here. So we'll be going, using the finishes between those. And then we've still got some natural in addition to kind of showing you what's going on with our kind of pre-finished ones here. So you wanna talk about applicators real fast? Sure. Okay. Yeah. We have a lot of them. Yeah, there's a number of different ways to apply your finishes. So first you just got some sponges. All right. So these are just your Dollar General Oslo, what is that? I don't know. I don't know. What, it doesn't kitchen matter. sponges, yeah, yeah. just plain old kitchen sponges, not the kind with like the scrubby pad on one side. You don't want those, but just plain old sponge. Um, yep, we got our wool daubers. That's classic, yep, right? That's, comes with every bottle of dye, just your little standard wool dauber. So that's a thing. We've got natural shearling pads. Mm -hmm. um, so these are just kind of scrap pieces that have been cut and trimmed. You don't want to leave the hair super long on these guys. So you kind of want to trim off that excess and then make sure you get all the excess fluff out yeah, of it. Yeah, get all the fuzzies out of it. Yeah, because that, that will come off in your finish and you don't yeah. want that. Those are really great for dyeing larger surfaces. Right, and then we've got, this is the synthetic wool pads that you could possibly use if you wanted to. Yep. We've kind of got some miscellaneous wool pads. These are kind of just, I think, a little bit of a cheaper version that we sell. Different shearling pads. Yeah, yep. just different. You've got your canvas cloth. Yep. So just little canvas sheets. This is our medium weight canvas. We sell burnishing cloths, but you could just use this. You could probably even use denim, like your old denim if you wanted to. Could. Possibly. Um, horse hair brush. Yep. For some buffing. My and favorite. The airbrush. The airbrush. So typically most of the finishes that we apply to leather here in the shop, we'll either spray through something like an airbrush or like a gravity fed cup gun uh, that we have hooked up to our compressor with a little air regulator. And that works really well. If you can spray your finish, I would suggest it. Wiping it on, can you can have, get some great results still depending on which one you choose, uh, but spraying it works best. And yeah, it gets to get the most consistent. You don't have to worry about streaks. I know when we were doing a lot of these samples yesterday, we have a lot of streaks because we use the dauber yep. um, and it's hard to avoid that. So airbrushing is really the ideal way to get that finish on. Um, you can get much more consistent 
light and even coats. Exactly. Yep. And it's so. always best to go with multiple light coats whenever you're spraying or wiping it on. Uh, that's going to be a lot more durable. Uh, it's going to resist moisture a lot better than trying to lay it on in one heavy coat. Yeah. I think we actually have an example here. We put one of these, we put on one big heavy coat and we pulled it up this morning and it cracked on us. Exactly. So yeah. we'll kind of go over that when we get to it. Yep. Well, I guess we'll just start here at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> with saddle soap or pro clear? We'll start with Pro Clear. Right. Like the saddle soap, he's a he's like a special finish. I don't know. Right. You can do anything with this. You can finish things with saddle soap, kind of. You can you know clean and condition. You can refresh. Yeah. So yeah. he's just kind of your all in one. You might use him in addition to whatever finish that you choose. Exactly. So saddle soap is. I don't know. So starting with Pro Clear, whenever we applied this yesterday, we used a dauber. Uh, it's a really thin viscosity finish. Uh, I liken it most to the, the Angelus acrylic finishes. It's just a, a an acrylic finish just like those, but kind of our own brand on it, our own take mm -hmm. on it. But we had some pretty good results. We used a dauber. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's get a close up there. Uh, yeah. So you can kind of see, we left one side. And, there we go. Yeah, there it is. So there's really not a whole lot of streaks in this. You can see a little bit from the dauber, but it's really pretty good. I mean, yeah. we didn't try too hard. We were getting ready the last hour of the day here and kind of whipping through it, but they look pretty good, both on the import and the veg. That way, there we go. There it is. Yeah, really pretty consistent. Yeah, pretty right. good gloss to it. I'd say it's most like probably the high or the, the high gloss or the satin on the acrylic um, Angelus. Yep. Uh, so since it is a really thin viscosity, it, it sprays super easily uh, right through your airbrush, cleans up with water. I usually throw some hot water in the airbrush just to spray through it and clean it out before I put it away. Okay. So that's a pretty good option. Um, moving on, Angela 620 matte. Yep, so we've got just this guy. So this is our matte version. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of the Angela, mm -hmm. they look glossy. pretty similar. It, yeah. It's honestly a little bit glossy compared to some of these other finishes. But that is the the 620 mat. Um, again, pretty even application. We used a dauber. Um, it went on really well. It did. Like there's really no streaks in in that at all. Not a lot of color change either to your leather. So, uh, you no. see a little bit, you know, a little bit darker on the Herman Oak than on the import. But it, it really doesn't change the color of your natural veg much. No, it really just kind of makes it a little shiny, even though it's a dull finish. So not super dull. Not not super matte. Right? But pretty nice. So I wanted to do this with a lot of them. Where's that water bottle? Right here. I'm curious. So like I said, a lot of times you finish your veg tan leather because veg tan, it just soaks up water, right? So I, I would kind of want to just test some of these and see you can get a pretty good difference on how those... Look at that. How it resists water since we only did half the coaster. Yeah, it just stands right on top of that acrylic finish. Obviously, eventually that finish will wear off. You'll start to get some moisture penetration if it sits there long enough, but it does pretty well. You know? Yeah, there's really not much soaking in on there. Very nice. I know, I like... We should do that on all of them. That's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> right? It resists really well. Now? There we go. I'm terrible at this. That's okay. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so that's the Angelus 620 matte finish. Yep. Stick those there. You want to try it with the Pro Clear yeah, real quick? Let's, let's see what the Pro Clear looks like while we're at it. Similar results. It really stands on top of it, resists the water pretty well. Same thing with the import. And this was just one coat on each of these finishes. We didn't do multiple coats. So that's the Pro Clear. Yep. Okay. All right. You're gonna. Awesome. I'm gonna drive you nuts because I know I'm gonna disorganize these. Oh, that's fine. What's the second one? You do? Okay. So this is the matte acrylic finish. That was the second one. First one we sprayed. Second one we showed you guys. So okay. So. All right, moving on, we've got the Angela 610 High Gloss. And that would be this one. See if we can see much of a difference. It might be kind of hard to tell on camera. I mean, even from the matte Angelus, but uh, it, it's a little shinier. It's got a little bit more of a gloss to it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, not a lot. But still, I mean, it went on pretty even. It's got a nice, uh, there, there's not a lot of streaking going on here. So exactly, pretty, pretty good finish. Go ahead and spray those, Liz. Right, spray these. And once again, this this is, we applied these yesterday afternoon. So they have cured for not quite 24 hours, but pretty close to it. Yeah. These acrylic finishes are really great for high wear items because they are flexible. Um, you can see, let me dry this off real quick. They are pretty flexible. So you can bend them around and you don't see a lot of cracking. 
Nice. Yeah. So anything like belts, wallet backs, um, journal covers, things that you've tooled on that are going to get bent in certain areas, they do pretty well. Yeah, that, that's awesome. It's no cracking at all. And kind of just to point it out, guys, there there's a lot of finishers on the market. And a lot of it comes down to personal preference. It's what you enjoy using. It's what you have a good experience with. Maybe it's what you learned, you know, from your predecessor, whoever taught you leather work. Um, there's not, like, one perfect finish that you have to use with some thing. I mean, there's going to be ones that are better suited for what you're doing. But a lot of them are going to be pretty similar. Yeah. Pretty similar outcomes. Um, it kind of just comes down to preference a lot yeah. of it. Some so. of them do a little bit better depending on your application method, but yeah. like you said, they are very similar. So this is the Angela 605 Satin. Hopefully you can see a little bit of a difference maybe. Get some light on it. Pretty close to the high gloss. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually really impressed with these Angela's finishes for going on so well with the dauber. They did. Like there's really not... Um, there's really not streaking happening. What if we crease this real good and then try and wet it and see if water penetrates? All right. So kind of broke the grain on the leather there. And it's really not getting through very much. No, still looks pretty good. Yeah. That's a good finish. Yeah, that so, does pretty well. Angeles, I mean, that's their, you know, their main industry is the shoe industry. And so they really, I think, have, have spent a lot of time and effort to kind of... Um, come up with a really flexible finish and paint option. So Angelus also, you know, makes all those acrylic paints that you can use with with your leather products. Um, and they really have tried super hard to get a, a flexible option that's not gonna crack on you um, with wear and use. So that was the satin. We're moving on to Angelus 600. And uh, honestly, I didn't, I mean, it's number 600. I didn't know exactly what it was. So we had to look it up. Kind of just their standard yeah. finish. Yeah, standard acrylic finish. It's a semi gloss to satin something like that yeah i think kind you can in between. buff it if you want if you want a higher gloss a little bit but otherwise uh again it goes on really well just like the other angeles products um not quite as much of a gloss as the satin even and uh, pretty close to the matte i would say yeah there you go a little experiments here where we go i know right again resist water super well yep not a lot else to say about that. <laughs> Pretty similar to the other ones we've done. Yes. Okay, black resiline. You yes. cover this one. Liz dyed this one. I did do so this one. She can. These she don't can look fantastic. However, we will. Um, let's do it. Yeah, let's just do it. So this is this is the only black finish I know of on the market. There, I, I guess there might be some more. You've got some edge coats I suppose you could kind of use as a finish, but yeah. maybe not, not so much. But in any case, so this is a black finish. So if you are dyeing something black and you feel like there's still a little bit of issue with your dye and you want a little bit of help, you know, kind of evening out that color, you can use this black resiline on top. So if we go to the overhead here, you'll kind of see, I mean, these streaked pretty bad. Um, and then when it comes to the resiline, I did shake them up before I use them, which you shouldn't do because that puts a lot of bubbles in it. And I actually had to, I have my first one over here. And so this one, all those bubbles sat in that finish, which was not happy. So you wanna make sure that this one you don't shake up, or if you do, you let those bubbles settle um, because that's gonna affect your finish. But this, you probably wanna use on black leather, obviously. Um, it's not, it's more of a gray hue once you get it on there. Um, it's not a super solid color, it's pretty liquidy. Um, not super dense on the pigment. So this can kind of just help you even out. Obviously it's not great for just putting black on natural, but we're gonna, we got some black coasters here, so we're gonna apply a little bit of resiline to that and see what happens. Yep, so the instructions on the dye bottle tell you to go ahead and dampen your applicator. Um, if you're using a sponge or a, a dauber, so we're gonna dampen a little bit with water. You wanna use it? No, yeah, go ahead, no, you're on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I don't know if it's damp, but how damp should it be, Clayton? Just, oh, no. just slightly. You have a dampness figure. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you're spraying it, again, spraying it with light coats is gonna be best. The stuff dries pretty quick if you're spraying it. Yeah. But it will, it'll help even out any tones. If you're dying, we dyed these with the airbrush, so they're pretty even for the most part. You'd be surprised, you think black is black, but you can get more streaks in your black dye than you would imagine. Oh, 
right in the circle. We need to be in our circle. See, guys, we even put a circle on there. We can't, we can't do it. Just kind of. Oh, once again, those bubbles. Yeah. You're like. Should I put it? I kind of applied it like a conditioner there. I did a little bit. Maybe you should do this. <laughs> Try and do any better. It's kind of even and out. Yeah. I would go for. That does really. So this is. I mean, I guess it's unfinished. So once again. Finishing all of your dyed, you know, veggies is going to make them look classier and, and, and a little bit cleaner. So yeah, kind of getting one good coat and then... Mm. So that's the way to do it, guys. Look at those. Yeah, look it might at still a little bit, be a little bit streaky, but it should dry pretty evenly. And it does. It evens out the tone and see how quick that dried. Yeah, that actually looks up. That's okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. But I still feel like probably once you get to this point, then you'd want to buff it. I would. It's a little bit darker than, say, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty black. It's a nice matte. It's pretty matte right now. Okay, so there's your black finish. And also, guys, just, you know, if you buy a bottle of finish, read the instructions. See how the manufacturer tells there you how to apply it. the instructions on the side, right? There really are. A lot of Phoebe's products so. will actually tell you to use saddle soap to clean your project beforehand. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that saddle soap is still fine. It penetrates the surface of leather, so you can still put a finish over the top of it, and it'll stick. Yeah. All right. So you that's can dye through saddle soap, too. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes I'll do it on my edges before I, I dye them. Okay. So we got that. Going on to regular resiline. I'm going to try to buff this. Give it a shot. So regular resiline goes on pretty glossy. It's got a similar gloss to maybe the satin or even the matte Angelus. Uh, but it did get a little bit streaky. Uh, again, we applied it with a dauber in this case. And it, it's another flexible finish, so it really doesn't crack very much. Whoops. You can bend it over and, you know, you might see the grain of the leather break eventually, but the finish really does a pretty good job at sticking. Yeah, pretty flexible. We'll hit it with a little bit of water, see how it resists water. Similar to the other ones, water stands right on top of it. It's not coming off, it's not getting sticky or gummy or anything. You are getting a little bit, so that might just be our application, but there is yeah. a little bit going through there. That's true, you're starting to see a few dots there. Like I said, we did all of these with just one coat. Yeah. Most of these are applied with daubers. So you can see maybe where, where we kind of streaked with the dauber. It's starting to, water's starting to penetrate there. Pretty good luck on the let's, Hermano. Let's see who did this one. Oh, that was a Clayton. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. too bad. So pretty good. Again, this is a pretty thin viscosity, so we will spray it through our, mm -hmm. our gravity fed cup guns or our airbrushes uh, pretty easily. Okay. And again, it's acrylic resiline, so cleans up with water. Pretty easy. Moving on, institutional leather finish. Let's grab these guys. <clears throat> now, unless you're in an institution, which is fine, I, I you know, I, I don't really see much of a reason to bother with it. I don't want to talk bad about anything, but I'm sure it has its place. We just didn't have a lot of good luck with this one. Yeah, it's, it's street pretty pretty it's, heavily there it's streaked if you um you know we applied it with a dauber so you can see where it kind of got thicker in some mm -hmm. parts than others and so it, it it didn't apply as evenly as some of the others yeah so and it's gonna be super safe to use i mean it, i guess if you're using like if you've got kids you're using it with kids and you just want something that's just the most kind of edible non-toxic <laughs> yeah <laughs> not edible but <laughs> Not at all. Are you but... smelling it or drinking it? Smelling it. <laughs> it smells like, I mean, it doesn't smell like hardly anything. So. So, you know. Yeah. Probably wouldn't kill you. But, it's, I mean, it still resists pretty well. It like... does. It, it's resisting water fairly well. Uh, yeah. You know, multiple coats would probably help. Being able to spray it would be really nice. Yeah. So, this is just something that's on the market that if you needed to use, you could. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a bunch of other products as well. So that's the institutional finish from Phoebe. Yeah, with a lot of these acrylic finishes, if you're applying them with a dauber or a sponge, a lot of them say do not rub excessively. Because if yes. you sit there and you continue to apply it and, and rub it excessively, that finish will start to dry and get tacky and kind of gum up. And you'll start to see little globs on your project where it's 
it's kind of bunching up and sticking to your dauber or whatever applicator you're using. Yeah, you got to kind of be quick, especially with the acrylic finishes. You need to be quick about applying it and then let it do its thing. Yeah. Kind of even out. So, like I said, multiple thin coats is, is best. Yeah. Uh, leather balm with atom wax. Uh, this this one's pretty nice because it actually adds a little bit of moisture to the leather. Uh, the leather balm actually penetrates the surface and helps lubricate the fibers to where it, your leather is not so dry and, and crunchy. We use these a lot on our conceal and carry belts. Is it these? I think so. Okay. Yeah. That seems right. So, again, typically using it in the shop, we'll, we'll spray it through a gravity fed uh, cup gun. Um, you can spray it through an airbrush. Again, it's pretty thin viscosity. One thing you got to watch out for is whenever this stuff does get old, or if you leave it in your airbrush, that wax does start to dry out and it'll clog your airbrush or your cup gun eventually. Mm -hmm. Easy to clean out, not a big deal. Um, usually run some hot water through it and that, and that does the trick. Yeah, that's flexing pretty good. Yeah. Not too bad. Like I said, we use it on a lot of our finish belts or conceal and carry belts. So that's not resisting water quite as well as the acrylics but it is a wax-based finish. Yep. So again, multiple coats is gonna go a long ways. Yeah, so we've got, we've got the penetration there. But we did only do one coat, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. All right, tan coat. Okay, so now this, this is really popular with a lot of old school leather crafters. We get a lot of phone calls with people that use tan coat all the time, especially used it as a resist for tooling projects. Again, that's not what we're talking about today. But, man, it, you'd be surprised at how thick this stuff is. Um, when we opened it, Clayton was kind of like, smell this. It kind of smells like gum drag. It does. It smells a lot like gum drag. These guys make fun of me because I, I smell things. All right? That's how I remember. I'll smell leather and I can I remember where I got it or whatever, you know. So here's... Here's our little... But it's pretty thick stuff. So applying it with a dauber, I, I did apply it pretty thick, you know? So uh, it goes on like corn syrup. And this one we experienced some cracking. Yeah, so I don't... It's kind of hard to see, but you see yeah, some you of see these lines. Them. Yeah. And so you can hear it cracking too. Yeah, kind of crunchy. It. Yeah. So this one definitely thin coats. Maybe for use with, with products that mainly are going to be laying flat, uh, like pictures and things like that. Not something that you're going to want to mold later or, well, you know, like a turn back on a belt. That's probably not the best finish for that application. Well, I have a feeling this is going to soak up some moisture because it cracks. Yeah, you can, see it, <laughs> you can definitely see it in the cracks there. So. Ooh. It's a little. Feel that? Yeah. Feels like it's almost kind of water soluble. It's... We did do these last night, so you would think that that would be cured at this point. That's kind of diluting. But it is. A lot of the acrylic finishes, you know, you can rub your hand on there and, and they don't re-dilute with water. They clean up with water while they're, you know, yeah. before they're cured. But once they're cured, they, they shouldn't be water soluble yeah, so anymore. You can almost kind of see how oh, this one's like smearing. How, how jelly it is. Yeah. yeah. It did kind of turn into gelatin. Yeah, I can feel it. So that's, I don't know why. Hand coat is anyway. gelatinous. <laughs> That's so that's Danco. <laughs> that's Danco. You can see and see how that's sticky like that sticky. stuff is getting. Yeah. Like... Fun stuff. Yeah, read the directions. Okay. Well, so there's the coat. Moving on to bag coat. Yes. Bag coat we do use in the shop fairly often. Uh, again, spraying it through a gravity fed cup gun. Um, I like it because it does penetrate the surface of the leather. It leaves a really nice, smooth, luxurious feel. Let me get that in there. Um, it's kind of a, a pretty low satin yeah. sheen to it. A little streaky yeah. there, a little bit. It's not entirely the most protective finish. Like I said, it does kind of penetrate and uh, it really makes it feel nice. If you don't like the feel of acrylic, you know, oftentimes you'll apply two or three coats of acrylic finish and it just makes your leather feel plasticky. Yeah. This stuff does a pretty good job at preserving the feel. Don't we spray um, our wallet interiors, like the natural Herman Oak with the bag coat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to give it a nice satiny feel. Yeah, we usually oil it and bag coat it. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of just a nice, a nice natural, nice natural finish. Let's see what you got here. Not really too much of a water resistor. Yeah, so it can be diluted with water up to 20%. So. And it doesn't resist water super well, again, after one coat with a dauber. Right. So you got them, a little bit of penetration in you there. You can tell it's, it's not soaking it up nearly as fast as the raw veg. 
So you can, I would say with two or three coats, it would, it would do a lot better. Yeah. You got a nice flexible finish. Oh, okay. Alan says tan coat will not cure in less than 24 hours. So that's, it, it wasn't fully cured. We were hoping that, you know, our uh, last minute fun. preparation was, was going to pay off, but maybe not with tan coat. So Christian has a question. Something I don't hear a lot about is whether any finishes make conditioning more difficult later on in the lifespan of the product. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously if, if like, you know, your acrylic finishes resist water, resist moisture, if you try to condition them, you know, a little while later, then it's gonna resist conditioner as well. It's not gonna be able to penetrate the surface of the leather. So oftentimes you'll recondition after that, that finish wears off. And after you recondition, it is best to be able to refinish it as well. Correct. Um, but that's also before you apply your finish, you wanna make sure that you add whatever moisture you want back into the leather. So a lot of times you'll finish your tooling, you'll put a layer of neat's foot oil or some sort of an oil on to the leather, let that soak in and, and, and cure before you start your finishing process. That way you've put the moisture in the leather first, it's good for the next year as that finish is doing its thing. And then when it's time to recondition, um, you know, the finish will probably have worn away a little bit. You yeah, put the moisture wanna, back in and put that finish back on. You wanna seal the leather back up. Karma says we used tan coat on a wallet. It was used on a finished leather, not a veg tan. Seemed to work okay long-term. Do you think it would be okay on finished leather? Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to stick. Every piece of leather is different. So I'm not going to say it's going to work on every piece of finished leather because there's, I don't know how many infinite number of chrome tan leathers out there, yeah. you know? I probably um, wouldn't put something like like patent leather. I probably wouldn't put too much of a finish on. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Good call, Liz. <laughs> if it's already finished leather, you, I mean, you really don't need to finish it um, unless you're really wanting to protect it in some high contact situation. Right, right. Um, all right, so what's so, next? Carnuba, Carnuba cream. cream. This one's pretty cool. So I've recommended this to a lot of people for uh, actually helping to restore the finish on some of their furniture, which would be chrome tan leather. Um, and I brought a couple stools over here. We did, we did do a couple of coasters with it, just like the others. And so it is a conditioner with a wax content. So once you apply it, it'll penetrate the surface, leave kind of a waxy layer that you can kind of buff to a, a semi-gloss later. Yeah, so you can't, I mean, you really can't really see it. This is the side that we applied the finish to, that Dude, one. Not a lot of color change. Mm -mm. There's just a little bit of a sheen to it. Yeah, really no color change at all. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of something, like this is, this is a product that I use kind of in my gambit of finishing products, um, you know, when I'm making my knife sheets. So, I'll, I'll apply usually gum trag to most everything, and then I'll, I might do a layer of carnauba cream, and then I might do a layer of salt soap. Mm -hmm. And just kind of build up and condition and make everything feel good all around. Yeah, I applied this with the Phoebe's conditioning pad, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of fancy. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all embroidered. Um, and it, it goes on super easily. It's user friendly. It doesn't get all streaky or anything. No. Um, it's one of the ones that you can just kind of keep rubbing until it's all rubbed in. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I did do half of a stool with it earlier. So I'll go ahead and hold this up. I think you can get a close up of that. Yeah. Why don't you sit on the table and we'll see if that top camera will get that. Oh, top on the table. Okay. All right, so you can see on this side over here is where I use the carnauba cream. It's a little bit duller. This is a really kind of an old stool, so all the finish had worn off this um, this chrome tan leather, right? And so whenever I applied this carnauba cream, it really darkens up quite a bit. I'll show you real quick. Right here in the center, there's really nothing there. You start to apply that, and it'll start to darken up quite a bit more than you would expect. And that just means it was pretty dry. Pretty dry. Needed some moisture. Pretty dirty. Yeah. But again, this is a pretty safe product to use. It doesn't change the overall color a whole lot. It'll change the sheen a little bit as you see over here. But over time, as you sit on this, you'll kind of get a, a nice butt burnish on that. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it, the gloss will restore. Like I said, this- It's a manual burnish. Yeah, this stuff has got a wax content, so. It will burnish. Just kind of doing the other half of that there. And that'll take, I don't know, Probably like a half an hour. Yeah, 20, 30 right. minutes to dry out, you know, depending on how much you put on and you can reapply afterwards as needed. Um, you know, if I was restoring something like this, I'd probably do two or three coats. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
right. Water down the coasters. On the water the down the coasters. Yeah, water down. Oh, you that's didn't spray those down yet. Put oh. the water far away from me, so I couldn't do it. Water the down coasters. <laughs> All right, let's see. Again, this is the Carnuba cream. You can see it's resisting the water. If the water sits on top of it long enough, it will start to penetrate. Um, that's why I said I'd normally do two or three coats if I'm refinishing something that's pretty old. This being a just natural veg tan with no finish on it to begin with. I'm not too surprised. Yeah. Again, if you're really looking for for uh, super water resistance and acrylic, yeah, yeah. Or acrylic's going to be best. Yeah. If you're wanting to be able to burnish it, um, you know, to a high gloss, you're going to want something with a wax content. Nuba, there we go. Okay. Leather sheen. I think you did this one. I did. So let's see here. So this leather sheen, this is, so Phoebe sells, I think we also have the spray version of the leather sheen. Um, is there three different kinds? Why do I want to say that there's, maybe there's just the no, two. I think we just have the, the aerosol can and then we've got, we sell the liquid leather, leather yeah. sheen. So pretty, pretty good gloss. Is this an acrylic? It is. Flexible, durable acrylic. So we're back to kind of some acrylic option here. So once again, you've got that glossy coat um, on it. This one didn't streak. Like that looks pretty good. It's pretty, pretty even finish after we applied it with a dauber. Um, so looks, looks good. Leave the yeah, hiding the water from me. Resisting water really well. Yeah. As expected with an acrylic finish. Looking pretty good. Probably a couple coats would be best. It looks like maybe I missed a couple spots here. With the dauber. Yeah. Yeah. Got it a little bit of light, a little light in a spot or two, but otherwise pretty good. Oh, we're back down here. Yeah, not real streaky, nice even application. Yeah. So, so doing doing something like this on a larger uh, surface, I'd probably use a, a shearling pad. I prefer the natural shearling pads as opposed to the synthetic, but. Right. And that one didn't crack, right? I know it said flexible. You yeah, no, it a little I'm bit. Kind of yeah, no, it's not cracking at all. Get overzealous with your bending. Just get overzealous with it. So the hammer. <laughs> that might be a little bit. I think you're starting to break grain at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and we're talking about you know seven to nine ounce coasters that you're going to break the grain if you bend it too far. Yeah, please, please don't ever hammer your seven to nine ounce turnbacks on like non wet leather. Right, right. You're just it's gonna, not going to stretch. It's just going to crack. It's just going to crack. Um. Okay. So moving on to the Finici mat. Now these are a couple of fairly new products for us. They are. I, I was pretty excited to to try them out. I thought they were pretty neat. So the mat. Um, it really is matte, as opposed yeah. to the, the Angelus matte, which still has a bit of a gloss to it. This is a nice matte finish. You can't tell much of a difference between the two. I like how Liz put the pot bottle in there, and then Clay's like, get that bottle out, out of here. here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so not a lot of color change. I mean, none at all, really. Yeah. Between your import and your Herman Oak. Uh, they both look great. Even application. Uh, we used a uh, sponge applicator with these. We did. It. it recommended that you use a slightly damp sponge. So that's what we did. And so there's a little bit here. It's starting to soak in through, but once again, we only did one coat. So if you did a couple coats, oh, and we did also do these ones this morning because we ran out of time last night. So maybe they're not fully cured yet. That's true. So anyways. Um, Worth noting. Yeah. So there's just a little bit here, some penetration, but just one coat. But if you're looking for a finish that is not a high shine, like pretty, pretty even, it's not going to darken your leather because with some of these, it definitely did darken the leather when we put the finish on. So this is, this would be a good one for that. Okay. So now we've got the glossy Finici. Yep. Same product, just in a higher gloss. Now this one streaked pretty well with the applicator. It did. See, did Liz, yeah, Liz did these I, ones. I you did those See ones. the aggressive up and down motions that she did with the dauber. It said to apply it like that. It said to apply circular, it aggressively. Circular motion, evenly. <laughs> it did say circular motion, so that's what I did. So, yeah, we've got a little bit more streaking in here. Oftentimes, with multiple coats, um, you're going to get a lot of that out, right? You're going to get a lot more even application with a few coats um, to where you're not going to notice a lot of that streaking in there. Yeah. And again, water resistance. Oh,
Yeah, I can, about the same as the other. Not yeah. too bad. It'll slowly start to soak in in spots where the, the finish is thin. Yeah, so a couple coats on this one would be good. Yep. Again, it's water-based. Clean up with water. Super easy. Finici really makes some great products, including their edge paints. So I don't want to dog that one too much because I am partial to some Finici paint. Saddle lag. Okay, so now we're moving into our aerosols. We do offer three um, aerosols. If you do not have an airbrush or spraying capacity, but you do want to spray on your finish, then we do have the, the aerosols that you can get. Yeah, I mean, so. well, we, we've got an airbrush. We've got, you know, the, the capacity to spray whatever finish we want. I mean, we keep cans of, of these aerosols around the shop. Because it is really convenient just to be able to pick up your project and just, you know, hit it real quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Denny quick shines everything. Right. Everything. <laughs> Well, we stole all these from Denny, so he had some Sadillac too. Uh, Sadillac, I mean, goes on pretty well. It doesn't spray quite as well as the others. Uh, I told you I'm terrible at this. <laughs> doesn't spray quite as well as the others. Um, if you spray for too long and you don't clean the nozzle of it, you'll start to get maybe some bubbles or some, some globs that come out and, and hit your project. So you'll want to be sure to, to make sure the nozzle's clear. Yeah. And uh, gets a nice glossy finish to it. So this is a lacquer. Yes? Yes. So this is our only lacquer finish, if I'm... I believe so. Yeah. And that just puddles right up. Yeah. So... Pretty good coverage. This was, you know, one coat. Yeah. One pretty decent coat with the aerosol and, yeah, no penetration. And when did you spray these? Maybe 15, 20 minutes before we started the video? Not, not very long. That's yeah. That's the nice thing about spraying your finishes is you don't use nearly as much product and they dry a whole lot faster. That's right. Yeah. That looks good. Oh, let's see how that, does that crack? No, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and bend it over. Um, I have had experience with Sadillac in the past, trying to apply, you know, getting it pretty thick, and I have had experience with it cracking before, Yeah. but that was after, you know, like four or five coats. So this did, as you can see where I bend it, it is starting to kind of open up that finish where it's letting a little bit of water through. Um, but it didn't crack necessarily. Yeah, a lot of times, so. you know, if I'm if I'm doing a belt and I've got the turn back and I've got the turn back bent over, I'll go ahead and hit that turn back again a little bit with some more saddle lag just to make sure and seal up where any of the leather had cracked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's your saddle lag. And then leather sheen. Um, leather sheen is kind of nice just because it does preserve the feel of your leather. Again, if you don't like some of the, the heavier finishes like saddle lac or an acrylic finish or the tan coat where it makes it feel kind of plasticky, uh, this stuff does seem to penetrate the surface and give it a nice feel. Yeah. No, what, not really too much color change, maybe slightly darker here with the import. Ugh. Not hardly at all. This piece of leather is tough. So. And I believe this is a wax-based finish. That's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's probably so, not gonna resist quite as well, but we'll take a look. So, did you spray this one? Yeah, I didn't see the line. <laughs> so it does, it does penetrate. Uh, when you were spraying that, you were actually pretty impressed. Like it was soaking right in yeah. as you were spraying it. It soaks in so, pretty quick. Yeah. Here, I'll show you real quick. So this is definitely not a water resistor. So if you're gonna right. apply it, you'll see it, the leather really soaks it up. Just like, just almost like water. Yep, and it's just gone. So you need a several coats of this if you were, or just something that you weren't necessarily super worried about um, water resistance, but you just wanted a nice finish on it. So, but it looks nice. Woo. Yeah, it's starting to smell good in here. <laughs> All right, quick shine. This is a local favorite. It's local, I mean, here in the shop. Uh, we go through quite a bit of quick shine. Like I said, it's super convenient in the aerosol can. It's another wax-based finish, uh, really similar to Leather Sheen. So it's probably not gonna resist water with like one coat nearly as well as something like Sadillac. Um, but it does help preserve the feel of your leather a little bit. And it gives a much higher gloss than Leather Sheen. Yeah. Leather yeah, Sheen's so. pretty dull overall. And you kind of see, it's not super high gloss. I mean, it's not an acrylic, but it definitely has a little bit of a sheen there. Yeah, and you, yeah. you can really tell the difference on something like black leather. I'll show you real quick. See, it, it, it gets pretty glossy as opposed to the leather sheen, which will yeah. soak in so and be much more matte. Natural, non-dyed coaster, and then that one. Yeah, that looks great. Yep. 
So let's hit these with some water and see what they do. I mean, that's... That's resisting quite a bit better than the leather sheen. Yeah, probably another coat or two and you'd be good to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, especially sometimes, like, I'll use that as a as a finisher. So I'll kind of use some of the, the liquid products here um, between... It's awkward, this corner. It's hard to okay. see, right? Over here. <laughs> we just lay down and I'll do that. There you go. <laughs> There we go. Masters, okay. quick shine. I don't, I mean, Masters makes the contact cement. I don't know if they make any other, like, leather finishing products. This is the only one I'm aware of. But they do also make the contact cement that we recommend so much. Correct. So. Because it comes in a nice, convenient little tiny can. All right. So that's that one. Okay. So we've got some pre-dyed coasters over here. So we're going to kind of go through and like play with a couple of these. We did bring our Pache airbrush in. And so we are going to spray a couple, but it looks like we've got a few questions here real fast. So Joshua says, this one's highlighted, so I'm going to read it first. Saddle has always pulled my dye back out, even waiting days after dyeing. So you're saying Saddle pulls the dye out of the leather, essentially? I've heard that a lot as as well. That's kind of a even after buffing. I just want to say even after you buff it to get the pigment off the top. We got some Gosh. dyed pieces here. Let's take a yeah. So oh, yeah. what she's saying is after we you know we spray dyed these after you dye them there's still some pigment resting oh, yeah. on the surface Look at of the leather. It's definitely it already came off on his fingers. There it is. So after you dye it, it might be a good idea to go ahead and take something like a canvas cloth and just rub any excess pigment off the top of it. I tend to find that this isn't usually as necessary with airbrushing because you're not using as right. much dye. And there's just a tiny bit that really came off there. Yeah, but especially like if you're applying the dye with a dauber or with the sponge of some sort, you're getting a lot more pigment in that leather than if you were to airbrush. Exactly. So then applying Saddle X or something like that, it you know, it really shouldn't pull the dye out of the leather like you're saying, but I'm not saying that it doesn't. So we'll kind of set that aside and let that dry, see what that looks like here in a few minutes. That's one coat. Okay, so we'll see what that does. There. Okay, well, Clayton, we want to do a little airbrushing? Okay, we wanna... well, Robin's oh, yeah. got a question. Why don't you read this one? So Robin wants to know, what finish do you recommend for horse tack, saddles, bridles, and breast collars? I mean, so. the, the prompter says, Denny says saddle soap, so <laughs> I, I can't say anything else but saddle soap at this point. Yeah, like if you're if you've got tack coming in and you're cleaning it, like honestly, like a couple good good coats of saddle soap as you go through um, is probably gonna refresh that, clean it up, put the moisture back in that it needs, and and get another wax layer on it so that it's ready to go back out in the elements. Exactly. Yeah. So. If you want to put something else on top of it to really, I don't know, seal it in, something like leather sheen applied really well, um, especially on something like tack, I think it would be pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, Larry's got another question. What do you recommend for cleaning the nozzle after spraying it, spraying and putting it away? So depending on what finish you're using, uh, I mean, most of them are water soluble, I guess. So hot water is usually what I use. Yeah. And that tends to do the trick. Um, so running a, getting a bottle of hot water and, and running it through your airbrush uh, will kind of keep it clear. You always want to vent the room when you spray, if at all possible. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, Mike wanted to know that's about a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm going to open a door. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're going to spray very little here today because it does. It's, you need to, I, I've seen people set up like, like cardboard boxes and they'll put a couple box fans, you know, behind them with like, just like a filter that you use in your house um, to kind of pull that. So there's definitely a bunch of makeshift ways that you can make a little um, spray booth, spray booth, but definitely if you do spray especially with your dyes and, and things like the finishes yes they're not as terrible but when it starts to get with like dyes and stuff yeah. like you really need to be venting that you don't want to be breathing that in yeah stuff like saddle even quick shine and these aerosols they, they get pretty strong they can yeah for sure uh aaron says difference in the pro dye versus other dyes as far as bleed out and rub off good question hi aaron thank you <laughs> <laughs> go ahead um, I mean, I, I don't use a lot of water-based dyes, but from what I hear, they tend to have less bleed off because the, 
the pigment isn't as strong? Clayton, this is a you question. This is the questions I send to him. Okay, so the experience that I have with uh, like using the pro dyes, they tend to, and they look like they penetrate a little bit deeper, so I usually get a little bit warmer colors um, as opposed to the regular Phoebe's leather dye. Um, rub off seems to be about the same. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I always finish my my uh, right. dyed pieces of leather, so I guess I don't test that real often before I finish it. Um, a pro dye versus water stain. Um, something like the Fenici water stain, I've used that a little bit, and that stuff does not come off at all. It's really great about not crocking, whereas the pro dye will, will come off a little bit. You'll have some excess pigment. And really a lot of that will come back to how you're applying it, as to how Correct. much pigment you have is going to be left over sitting on the top that you need to get off. Um, if you do have pigment sitting on top, and this is especially prevalent with, with black dyes, I feel like is usually the worst. Maybe with the blue as well. The, I yeah, the blue does pretty bad. Yeah, blue is pretty bad. But you'll have like this kind of weird oil sheen kind of sitting on top, and that needs to, to come off because sometimes you can yeah. suspend that, that excess pigment in your finish, and then it will kind of bleed off as the finish wears away. So that's something to kind of be aware of. That's true. Uh, Have you noticed any difference in spraying in spraying the pro the pro dye and the other dye if you if you're spraying them with a airbrush airbrush a yeah. sprayer thing a sprayer thing a sprayer uh, thing uh, that has air that comes out no no difference in the performance it it does seem like the pro dyes uh, they'll go on fairly dark and then lighten up quite a bit more as they dry versus the regular leather dyes you'll get a little bit more true representation of the color you're going to have right after you dye it with a regular leather dye versus pro dye. Gotcha. Does that make any sense? Because that, And I feel like that's the case because, the, like I said, the pro dye seems like it penetrates a little bit deeper, being an oil-based pigment. Thanks for going on. Yep. Sure. Um, yes, yeah, so this person wanted to know they have problems with removing antiques while applying finishes. Yes, because if you do, like Denny went over this in a couple of his, if you are applying your finish with a with a wool pad or something over your antique, you're just gonna be pulling that antique out of the thing. So really spraying on a finish after you antique is the best is the best method. Yep, that's yep. right. I mean, Denny pretty much using quick shine <laughs> on just about everything. He'll saddle soap it, he'll antique it, and he'll quick shine it. Yep, he'll resist it with something depending on what he's doing if a he doesn't want it. A lot of times he'll quick resist it with quick shine. Yeah, he'll <laughs> resist it with quick shine. Okay, well, do we want to dye some of these coasters? Oh, yeah. finish. Yeah, finish some of these coasters. For sure. We are already dyed. Yeah. So, so we did, I think, medium brown, green, blue, oxblood, cordovan, whatever that color came out Burgundy. to be. Burgundy. Burgundy, and then some black. Yep. Yesterday. Exactly. So what do we want to try? Well. Any suggestions? Let's see here. We already used, this is leather. Saddlelac. Saddlelac. Yep. Is it? So I think so. No, it was the sheen. This is the saddlelac that we did. Okay. It's looking kind of looking kind of funky. Oh, you know what? This is my this is my resiline. That's my fully finished resiline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is kind of looking a little funky. Maybe it needs to be buffed. Okay. Hey, Michael. Glad you like your belt. We will let Denny know. So I kind of want to try some more of this Pro Clear. Okay. Um, I was kind of impressed at how evenly it went on, especially using something like a dauber. Sure. And if it can be a Another alternative, maybe a more economical art alternative to the Angelus brand acrylic finishes, I think that might be might appeal to some people. Okay, so let's see what this does. So applying it with a dauber, we're gonna go to do go ahead and do half the coaster. So you can see applying it with a dauber, it's kind of hard. It goes on pretty thick. I got a little color transfer onto my dauber, which Ooh. tells me there's some excess pigment on the top. And that's fine and dandy, but we do have this awesome airbrush here. Let me just plug this in real quick. So once again, we've got our little Pache airbrush. I believe that is a dual action. Yeah. Can you um, this would be a single action. Oh, actually. single action. Sorry. Can you move it to the middle so I get a quick shot on it? Of the airbrush? Yeah. yeah that's probably going to walk its way off the table. We'll hold on to the airbrush. There we go. Right. So we do, we sell this little um, compressor that you can... You can buy, I'm not 100% sure how much it is. I think it's like maybe like a hundred bucks or something. It's not terribly expensive. And then we've got the single action airbrush. We also sell a dual action airbrush. Correct. Um, and then we sell these little, these little lids. 
that have a siphon on them. Um, you just, you can put it, the Angelus don't work like this, but most of your Feebeans dyes already come in a bottle that has the correct size cap. Um, so you can just buy new little siphon lid caps and put them on your bottles of finish and, and spray it from there. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna move this back over here. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't come off the table. <laughs> um, so, all right, you can see, I got another overhead. All right. So you can see where I just applied that ProClear with the dauber. It's already soaked in. It looked pretty uneven and thick in spots, but that's not too bad. Oh, it's evening out pretty well. You can see a little bit of streaks in there. Let's go ahead and spray it with the airbrush. I'll spray the other side with the airbrush and see what that looks like. Or maybe it'd be better to do a different coaster side by side. <laughs> All right, JW, do you have a, do you have to thin the dye to use in the airbrush? Uh, no, typically you don't have to thin the dyes that you're using in it or finishes. Um, but that being said, I will typically thin uh, whatever dye I'm using in my airbrush simply to help me control the uh, amount of pigment I lay down, the amount of color, so I can get different shades easier. Sure. Yeah, airbrushing really allows you to to play with how dense the pigment is that you're that you're getting out. And honestly, if you're applying um, a dye with a dauber or a sponge, thinning it out is not a terrible idea because yep. that that uh, sponge or that dauber is just going to be laden with pigment. And as soon as you put it on that leather, if it's dry, it's going to soak it right up, and you'll get. Um, you can get a lot of streaking that way. So if you thin out your dye before you use it, you're going to get a lot more even coating and you can kind of build the color up instead of just being stuck with the darkest tone of that pigment. Exactly. You always put more on, but it's really hard to take it off. <laughs> yeah. In any, in any kind of controlled manner, at least. Yes. Um, so yeah, back to the overhead, you can see the difference between the two. Hopefully you can see the difference between the two. We can this go to this one. Airbrush. Airbrushed versus I did half of this one with the dauber and so you can definitely still see some streaks in it Whereas the airbrushed one is evened out quite a bit and it's got a more even yeah, satin that looks, type finish. looks way better than this this one. So yeah, that one was saddle so, act We've got so both of these I'll just note this both of these pieces are hermit oak and this is our import leather so oh, sorry, sorry, Yeah, sorry, so this one I think just has a lot more texture in the in the leather But it's also a little crackly on the finish so exactly. Yeah, so okay. this one that I airbrushed, it, I mean, it's pretty well already dry. I used less material or less less of the finish uh, doing this entire coaster than I probably did with just doing this half of a coaster. It's going to dry a whole lot faster too, since so it's a thinner coat, and it should still resist water pretty well. well you see, it's starting to poke through. I don't think it's probably cured all the way. <laughs> But I, I just good. wanted to see. That's pretty good. That's yeah. starting to dry pretty fast. Yeah, that's that's not too shabby there. Nice. That's right. Pretty green. Um, we did all use Angelus dyes. Oh, I'm sorry, Phoebe's dyes. Phoebe's dyes on all these. So right. if you're, I think they're all just regular Phoebe's dye. Extra finish yeah. out. So that was our Pro Clear. What else do you want to try, Liz? Well, let's try. Do you think we should spray one of the thicker ones? Like if you wanted to spray the tan coat or do you want to talk about spraying tan coat or bag? And give it a shot. Coat? So a lot of times when it comes to like these thicker ones, it's more difficult uh, to spray. Yeah, tan coat, like I said, has got a pretty thick viscosity. It's kind of a, I don't know, a corn syrupy type viscosity. It should spray still with the airbrush. I don't know for sure, because typically we'll do it through a larger uh, cup gun. Wait, can you use a pancake type air compressor with this sprayer? Uh, as long as you have a pressure regulator, right? Um, the pan I mean, it does not take much air volume. Uh, you just have to, you gotta be able to regulate the pressure. Oh, we should do this one too. Yeah, you see this one's having a little bit of trouble. Yeah, it doesn't really wanna come out. It doesn't wanna suck up the, the pan coat. So, so the airbrush might not be the best option with tan coat. I do believe, did it say that you could thin that or was that the bag coat? Uh, no, no. No. So this one is not really a sprayable finish. So that was a wasted lid. <laughs> got All right, we can clean it. Paper towels. Uh, yeah. So I think somebody, I don't know if we asked that. Um, what's, uh, what's the difference between 
difference between a single action and a dual action airbrush. Boy, that's a it's a whole other video, Travis. Uh, no, it's it's pretty simple. Single action, which is what this is. Um, whenever you push this button down, it begins the set amount of airflow. You know, however much air this compressor is putting out, starts coming out the airbrush, and the same amount of material comes out, right? Pretty consistently. With a dual action, not only does the trigger push down to start the airflow, pushes down to start the airflow, but the trigger will also pull back to control the flow of material or the flow of dye, right? So on this one, you can control the flow of dye by twisting this cone right here, right there. Kind of twist that, you loosen it up to for a, a higher flow rate of dye and then tighten it back down uh, for a lower flow rate. Does that, does that cover it? Yep. What would you use to thin your dye, Liz? Um, you're gonna use denatured alcohol is what you use. Um, I know Phoebe's dye. Wrong. Oh. Phoebe's dye reducer, come on. Phoebe's dye reducer. <laughs> it's what we sell. I know. So yes, so Phoebe sells a dye reducer that you can use to reduce your dye. Denatured alcohol works. But it's well, just, it works pretty well. Yeah. yeah. So it works just fine. <laughs> I've even used used like rubbing alcohol, like isopropyl alcohol. It works fine. And if it was water based that. dye, oh, that. what's that? If it was water based dye, water, water based dye. Yeah, usually, usually water does it. Okay. Use water. Um, somebody Pure asked H2O. how to clean the dye out of the the airbrush. Once again, you would use alcohol. Correct. So we've got use a little denatured alcohol or dye reducer. Or dye reducer. Um, and just put, yeah, we usually just have a little cleaner bottle there full of dye reducer that will spray through it. And you spray through until it runs clear. Come on, I know it's gotta work. Picking the worst ones here, Liz. Airbrushing can be a finicky job it sometimes. It is super finicky. <laughs> Not going to lie. Yeah, never just start airbrushing if you haven't tested it out to make sure that you, the flow is good. You're not getting, like, bubbles for some reason or, like, spitting. Like, sometimes the airbrush, if it's not cleaned well or for whatever reason, sometimes it'll just spit dots of things. Yeah. Then that's no good. So... Just gonna say we did take this airbrush out of our spray booth in the shop. So anytime you walk up to this thing, you just don't know what's inside of it. Yeah, that's true. Your your thing isn't gonna fall off the table. Good thank you. Thanks. Man, this thing is not cooperating. I apologize. So maybe we're not gonna spray that. Yeah. You wanna try this one? This is this is Liz's fault. I didn't touch it. Here, let's just see. You think maybe I didn't get the thingy on? Atomics? Oh yeah, that's how Yeah. Well guys, let's see here. Um I guess Clayton we didn't go over gum track. Oh that's and right. And then gum track and saddle soap was kind of our last two hoorahs here as far as finishers. So Liz and I are pretty big fans of gum tracks. We are. Gum track, right? Or gum track accounts. And it smells amazing. It does smell really good. <laughs> like a like a green skittle. <laughs> that's so specific. <laughs> Not the apple skittles, you know, the lime ones. Anyway, so we use this, you know, Liz makes a lot of knife sheaths. I, I do plenty of knife sheaths, I've done holsters, uh, but just working with veg tan leather, this stuff works really great for burnishing the edges. But we found out if you want to gum track your edges and you don't want to be really careful about getting it on the top grain, you don't necessarily have to be if you're going to leave it natural, right? Right. But you, it, it will act as a resist. It, it does. So, yeah. so if you get gum track on the top of your, your leather and then you try to dye it, it's not going to be happy. No, do do all your dyeing and finishing really before you do your edging. That, right. That's what I recommend. Because if you are not careful with whatever product you use to do your edges, that's a sealer. If you use um, the the new ones that we have, Toco Pro or Tokenol, like all of those products are edge, they're sealers. And so if you get any of that slightly on the top and you haven't finished your leather how you want it to be, you're gonna not be happy yeah. at all. It's actually the same way with, with a lot of uh, contact cements and adhesives. Yes, they will slightly, they will, 
they will make a little spot. And yeah, so we've had it like you have to be really careful with your gluing if you're doing conceal and carries and you still want to be able to dye the front of your belt, but you're gluing two pieces together. Watch out for that glue and make sure that you're not getting it on the yep. front. The I front always recommend people clean the, the face of their leather with something like uh, acetone, denatured alcohol before, mm -hmm. just to remove any residual chemicals or oils before or they go off to dye it. Yep. Yeah. All right, so gum track. Like I said, we get it on the edges, we're going to get it on the face. So and it turns out. Yeah, it turns out. We kind of like it. Yeah, I just like to use it kind of liberally, right? <laughs> so it soaks in. I use quite a bit of it. I'll just kind of get the whole face of it wet. And then while it's still wet, I'll start to burnish it. And so really, you're just burnishing the top grain of the leather. And it really slicks it down. Brings out some character in the leather. You start to see things like fat wrinkles or... It does darken quite a bit. It will dry and lighten up some, but it does, it will darken your leather. Yep, um, kind of darkens your edges, give you a nice burnished look. But yeah, no, so you're doing your edges and you get some on the front of whatever it is that you're doing, just keep going, it's fine. It's gonna look pretty good. Yep. The trick is to keep going and keep putting elbow grease into it until it really starts to get shiny Man, look and at get that. high gloss. Remember the other day when I did a video with Andrew and I just burnished and burnished and burnished forever? <laughs> that was a great time. I like how on the edge of that firm and up around the edge it's getting, it's getting dark. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives a nice burnished look all the way around. And then, you know, it's not without effort. <laughs> it definitely takes a little bit of effort to get a nice slick and almost mirrored finish. Don't, don't we have like a... Um, one of those buffing machines in the shop for like if you're doing like 10 belts at a time, you'll just slather on the gum drag and then just take the buffing pad and you can buff the belts. <laughs> we have done that before, yeah. <laughs> like a, like a, car, a car buffer, essentially, like yeah. a orbital buffer. We've done that before. A dual action buffer. Yeah, look at that. So yeah, it gets a really nice glossy finish. It's super slick and smooth, kind of glass-like. <laughs> yeah, so that's just... And it brings out a lot of character in the leather. So natural Herman Oak, gum track burnished Herman Oak. That's pretty cool. Now it does resist water a little bit, uh, not, not as well as like an acrylic, um, but I'll show you guys. It will soak in. I certainly resist it better than just this natural. natural veg without a finish on it. But similar to like the leather sheen or or maybe the uh, the quick shine. But even at this point, if you just wanted this tone with your leather, if you were doing a natural product and you just wanted um, to kind of get that characteristic going, you can then apply an acrylic finish over the top. Correct. If you wanted to. Yeah. So. That is really nice. There's a lot of people that that uh, look for that, that lighter color natural veg. Uh, just, just barely a little bit darker than than it comes, and gum drag and burnishing is really great for that. Yeah, this import just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> not quite as exci as exciting, huh? No, it's not. Not the well, we got last. Saddle soap. So saddle soap, the favorite the of Denny. It's yeah, honestly, saddle soap comes in like five different kinds. You've got you've got the yellow saddle soap paste um and then you have the white saddle soap paste you've got the glycerin bar you've mm -hmm. got the spray glycerin i think is that all go on i don't know i don't know either but there's a <laughs> lot of different kinds of saddle soap and i'm sure each one of them has their application honestly i don't know all of them i think you can use the glycerin um to like wipe on your edges and do your yep. edges um that kind of works Denny literally saddle soaps everything like that's the final step to all projects is everything gets a good layer of saddle soap yeah if you need to fix something it's saddle soap um and i just like it it makes a really nice feel to the leather so a lot of times this will also be like my last kind of coat that i put on whatever product that i'm doing because it's like a velvety feel once you kind of get it all buffed in but so this is, I don't know, you can use this liberally, however, whenever. Yeah, and it... it, it I, oh, you want to do that seat? Penetrates the leather really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got another stool back here, another old stool that was upholstered in some chrome tan leather, right? And so helping to refinish this surface uh, with saddle soap, it, it does pretty well. Add some moisture back into it, kind of gives a, a bit of a dull finish to begin with. 
don't know if you can tell very well. It is pretty tall. So just rubbing it in, it, like she said, it, it adds a really nice feel to it. It penetrates the surface to lubricate the leather. Yes, that also looks just kind of a good, like, all-around product that you should just kind of keep on your Maybe. bench. Hold, see if you can hold it to this camera over here. Not left-handed, Tony. Lighting's not great. No, okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Applications like this, it's super great. It's very versatile. It's really not harmful. I've never ruined anything with saddle soap. I can say that for sure. Yeah. 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 It'll go on just about anything. Well, do we have any other questions, comments, anything else? Uh, did you want to talk about the brush? No, oh, the brush. So one thing with uh, like Atom Wax, uh, same thing with Carnuba Cream. Um, they do a lot of times need to be Buffed. Buffed. Right. There's our Adam Wax right over there. And so, I don't know. If you don't have a buffing wheel, let me put. I don't know where's, where's what now. Everything's been moved around. So if you don't have a buffing wheel, horsehair brush is usually your best bet. Right? And you yes. can also get like a soft chamois cloth. That'll do it. Um, any kind of microfiber cloth. But buffing the Adam Wax will really give a nice sheen to it. I honestly have no idea what's on here. It could just be dye. So, I don't know. Never mind. Yeah. So, brush out. A lot of your finishes do need to be buffed. So, just once again, read the instructions. It does say that it needs to be buffed. Um, we've got horsehair wheels mm -hmm. um, on our burnishing machines, you know, with our, our sanding and, and all of that stuff. Um, but this will do the job as well. So. Tony's typing. Everyone is quiet. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Do we just give you too much information? I mean, there's a lot here. It's a lot for us to take in, honestly. I mean, we don't use all of these finish on a day, finishes on a daily basis by any means. Sure. Uh, like she said, I mean, a lot of them are pretty similar and serve the same purpose. So picking out your favorite one, one that you're comfortable working with. Um, you know, there's a few that are better for applying by hand versus spraying. Um, yeah, uh, I'd pick out something like like ProClear seemed to go on pretty well by hand. Same thing with a lot of the Angelus products. Um, they went on pretty well with daubers or sponges. Um, a lot of them that streak pretty bad, like the institutional finish, streaked pretty well with uh, with a dauber. Yeah. Um, leather balm can, that can be a little bit challenging, tan coat. Any of those you wanna maybe avoid applying by hand if you have large surfaces to do. It might be fine on a belt. You're probably not gonna notice a lot of streaks on a belt. Uh, but if you're doing a bag, uh, be careful there. And what about spraying Angelus 620 matte finish? The Angelus spray is great. Um, we sprayed a lot of Angelus through a lot of our larger cup guns. But it's again, pretty liquid. It's pretty watery. Yeah, it's it's real similar to the Pro, Pro Clear. Real, very thin acrylic finish. Yeah. And so it should go through your airbrush or uh, spray gun easily. Okay. All right. We're getting the wrap it up, wrap it up sign from, from Rusty here. Okay. Let's so see. how does that saddle look on the green look? Oh, Joshua wants to go back to that green saddle lock piece. You know, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> she said it with, you know, Liz pointed out it is on our import leather and we didn't, we didn't take a whole lot of care to pick out the most pristine coasters. So like we just kind of went in the shop yesterday and cut some really quick. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Take it over, Liz. It's it's not it's not our favorite look out of all the ones that, that we've done today. So it did. Off. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I've got a burnishing cloth here, so let's see. Let's see if we get any. And that was the spray. The spray. Yeah. So this I'm not I'm not getting anything coming off on my rag, um, but it does look like yeah, I can't really tell if that's pigment suspended in the finish, if it's come up, or if it's just a really like fat wrinkly piece. Yeah, I would, you know, if it were me and I did that, I would probably give it another coat or two. Yeah. And uh, and hope for the best. I, I haven't had that experience much with Saddleback in the past. So I'm, I'm hesitant to. And it could be it that, down. yeah, it looks like some around some of these fat wrinkles where the grain might be a little bit tighter, it didn't soak it up as much. And then where the grain is looser between them, it soaked it up more. Cause we did say that one really just went right into the leather, yes. Uh, the saddle lag kind of stands. It kind of stands. Well, the, 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 okay. the saddle, oh, the sheen, the sheen, sheen went right in. Yeah. Well, then never mind. Let's stop talking. 
something about oiling products after finishing. Um, Jonathan asked it, what about oiling products after finishing? So we just talked about how when you finish the leather, you are at least, you know, with most of your acrylics, you are sealing that leather in. Uh, you're, you're sealing whatever you've done. So if you try to oil after, you're not getting the penetration that you want from the oil. So you need to oil before you start dyeing and finishing is, is typically the, the order of operations that we suggest. Yep. So we're gonna give that one another coat. I'm kind of kind of curious to see how this turns out anyway. Maybe we can post about it later, see how that saddle act does. Sure, that's uh, a pretty heavy coat. It goes on pretty heavy. It's okay. lacquer. It is lacquer, it's lacquer. Yeah. Um, all right. What's your favorite at the end of the day? Um, well, okay, so the ones I'm most familiar with is gonna be uh, Leather Balm with Atom Wax, Quick Shine. This is my favorite for convenience, essentially. Uh, leather Sheen's not too bad if you want a matte finish. Pretty much the same there, kind of a matte and a gloss. Um, I was really impressed with the Pro Clear as far as an acrylic finish. Yeah, we haven't used that much here as far as daily operations, but it, yeah, it works really well. It applied and pretty evenly. Gum, gum track is probably kind of just the all around go to. Yeah, because I mean, you can get, you can do your edges, you can do the back of your yeah. belt. You know, a lot of times we're gum tracking belts, so we'll hit the flesh side too and, and burnish that down. But, okay. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Denny and I. We'll see you on Friday, and we will be finishing up my chaps. So join us on Friday at 11. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye.